Isometrics. What, yes. what, what needs to be said there? Isometrics just don't seem to be as hypertrophic. Why not? This is my issue with these kinds of takes. They just say like, oh, it seems this way or probably blah, blah, blah. It's like Dr. Mike doesn't have the ability to think outside of what he's read in these studies. Like critical thinking is just completely off the table. This is what I call S-tier arrogance because he is talking so confidently about something. Meanwhile, Dr. Mike is actually trying to be humble about the information because that's how research is done. You take a look at averages over time and then you determine where you think it might head. But hey, this guy's so confident. We got to hear him out, right? He's got to have some information or evidence to prove us otherwise. Just for clarity, we're talking about isometric, which is holding one position in the movement versus isotonic, which would be a full range of motion. So if he's not gonna use critical thinking, then let's walk through it together. Isometrics can be just as effective as using dynamic contractions. Immediately, no. So they found isotonic group had a higher amount of muscle mass gain compared to isometric. It's actually valuable to know that the isometric still did work quite substantially, and they point out in this article that it could be a quite useful tool during physical therapy. The thing I don't like about his discussion here is how he doesn't appreciate you have to talk in probabilities, and you have to be aware to not talk in certainty. Notice there's something here called a p-value. No matter what the research, there's always different statistics that need to be done so we know how safe the probability is of whether it's true or by chance. And this is also why we have systematic reviews and meta-analysis, because you don't just take one study, you take multiple studies and you put it all together to make sure it's not just by chance. He actually does have some really good points as far as the problem with isometric training is it's hard to gauge progressive overload. If the load doesn't change because the muscle length isn't changing, you're pushing an immovable object, how do you know you're going harder over time? But it's just so stupid to talk in such certainty without any evidence when there actually is evidence to go against what you feel. Meanwhile, Dr. Mike is simply going with the evidence but also being aware that over time, things can change in research. And that is just respecting the scientific process. I highly suggest you respect and listen to the people who speak with uncertainty and openness because they value that's how we actually need to find out information. And really ignore people who speak with certainty because they are almost certainly gonna be proven wrong. Notice that I didn't even say that certainly because it's stupid to be certain.